The stock markets in the first quarter of 2023 recorded truly important performances, and then the party seems to have ended with the banking crisis, then peace returned. The markets are not yet out of danger. Let's find out why and how it act in this context. The financial markets have had a truly positive trend. The Nasdaq is up 15% year-to-date and has been the best-performing market. European bonds rallied 2%, while USS and P500 stocks rallied 7%. Gold gained 9% to around $2,000 an ounce. In the sense that we have arrived at the data that I told you a little while ago while passing through a certain amount of volatility, such as the upheaval that Credit Suisse and the Silicon Valley Bank have created. They drove European and global markets back by 7% in the space of a week. Therefore, certainly, volatility has returned to dominate. In January, they rose by 3 to 5%, lost almost all of February, and then recovered it in March. What are the causes of this market situation? The undisputed actors of the markets are the central banks with their monetary policies, and the eyes of the operators are focused on the central banks and on the interest rates because what has been defined as a monetary drug pushed the markets in the 15-year period 2009 to 2021. Then in 2022, things have changed a bit, thanks precisely to the intervention of the central banks. If there is a recession, monetary policy will no longer be aggressive, or at least will be less aggressive, because it will shift from containing inflation to stimulating the underlying economy. So, let's see what the risks are. The first focus is credit tightening, or monetary restriction. The central bankers have acted in a very strong way to reduce the inflation rate, which has gotten out of hand due to the jamming of the post-COVID supply chains in China, as well as the end of globalization, so the delocalized production of low-cost products cost. This hike in interest rates carries with it some effects. We saw the first effect in the case of the Bank of Silicon Valley, where rising interest rates caused the devaluation of the securities portfolios of banks that had previously invested in long-term government bonds, which are the ones most sensitive to changes in interest rates. This can create systemic risk where people run to the bank to get their money back. The bank does not have the money by definition and therefore must mobilize the assets. But if it mobilizes the assets in the presence of rising rates, it will realize capital account losses and risk jumping. With many public bonds with even rather long durations, the risk of suffering repercussions on the income statement following a tightening of monetary policy certainly exists. And then we have the earnings factor up to now markets have concentrated on the macroeconomic aspect of interest rates. The value of a share depends on the value of expected future dividends. If I discount future dividends at a lower rate, the stock price rises, hence the importance of interest rate expectations. If profits go down, things are not going so well, and profits could go down because the economy is slowing down. In any case, the markets always have a certain physiological margin of fluctuation. Let's take into account that there can always be a correction. Another element of risk, after credit tightening and earnings problems, is the narration of the Fed. The Fed at the moment is not credible because the markets are betting on the fact that despite the Fed members saying that rates will rise, the markets are betting on the fact that rates will rise much less even fall in the short term. Let me hear your body talk. Woo! All right. The Fed has excluded rate cuts in 2023, but the markets don't believe it. If the markets deem the Fed credible again and therefore embrace the fact that interest rates will be able to rise even more sustainably, and the same goes for Europe with the ECB, the markets could go down because today they are already looking ahead, as can be seen by the fact that insiders are in a situation of risk appreciation. Today, the markets are lateralizing. In other words, the climb becomes slower, and proportionally, the descents are stronger. The market rises even if only due to the dividends, however, one account is a minus 5, which is then reabsorbed by a plus 15, and another account is a minus 7 which is then compensated by a plus eight. You always go up, but you go up less. One point of view that we must keep in mind is not to make hasty moves. That is, the rush to recover losses by adopting a speculative attitude. Why? The pain associated with a loss is double the pleasure associated with a win. 
So in order to recover, I go to excessively charge the financial risk by buying perhaps four to five shares, hoping that they will make a bang to recover a minus that I have accumulated in the past two to three years. This leads to taking very high risks. Another really important point of view is to take into account that 2023 will be a year of transition. There won't be a rocket start to the markets as there was after the COVID. Post COVID, there was central bank intervention and the expectation of an end to the pandemic. 2023 will be a year in which you need to have a little patience. While you've reached the end of the video, if you are interested in learning more about similar topics, here you will find other really interesting videos from the channel. Thanks for watching this video, click on the like button if you enjoyed it, and do not forget to subscribe in case you didn't. See you on the next one.